So this brings us to a very exciting point in the evening. Over 20 years ago, NAVS initiated the Vegetarian Hall of Fame by granting a Lifetime Achievement Award to Freya and Jay Dinshaw. And since that time, NAVS has selected a person or a couple every year to receive this same acknowledgement. The board looks for several things when selecting a recipient, such as full-time activism, or nearly full-time activism, the accomplishment of outstanding work to advance veganism, national or international recognition, and one whose work has affected a very large number of people. And we're blessed to live in a time when there are so many people that fit this bill. And that's what makes it so hard to choose just one recipient a year. And if choosing one recipient is hard, try putting together an awards presentation without that person finding out. That's the really hard thing. Indeed, as most of you know, keeping it a secret until this evening is actually one of the things that makes this so special. And in just a few moments, I'll be announcing this year's winner. But before doing so, let's take a moment to honor our past recipients, our heroes. These people are Jay and Freya Dinshaw, Helen and Scott Nearing, Michael Clapper, George Eisman, Paul Obis, Mahatma Gandhi, Alex Hershaft, Muriel Gold, Charles Stoller, and Deborah Wasserman, Patricia Lambert, Howard Lyman, Brian and Sharon Graff, Richard Schwartz, T. Colin Campbell, Brenda Davis, Joe Stepanik, Joe Connolly and Colleen Holland, Caldwell Esselstyn, Neil Barnard, Jenny Stein, Stein and James Levesque, and last year's winner, Ray Sikora. If I had to pick, I have to make sure this person is in the audience. I'm assuming that this person is in the audience now. Okay. If I had to pick one word to describe this year's Hall of Famer, it would be the word selfless, which means having little or no concern for oneself, especially with regard to fame, position, or money. Adjectives for selfless are altruistic, charitable, generous, humanitarian, and loving. The man receiving this year's award, that's a clue, embodies all of this. He's a model of peace and love, and that's another clue, and generosity and grace, as he extends limitless compassion to people and animals. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the 2014 recipient of the Vegetarian Hall of Fame, John Pierre. <laughs> Oh my God, it's not a secret anymore. Thank God. Wow, okay John, are you all right? It wasn't easy to get you in here tonight. Several people have been working really hard to get you in that seat. I know you don't like to sit. All righty. <laughs> I'm going to tell you about John Pierre. He was born in 1964 and he was very close with his whole extended family and his nickname was Buddy. His grandmother was a living example of kindness and compassion and his grandpa, a third degree black belt and former, former police detective, was very much the protector type. And his cousin Bill says that John was strongly influenced by these traits, which likely explains why he's always been drawn to helping those in need. Here's John with the family dog Jacques, otherwise known as Poodle, and Kitty. 
And here's John canoeing in the backwaters of Ketiko Provincial Park with his cousin Bill. And I love this. These are the pins from John's jean jacket when he was a teenager. <laughs> John's cousin Bill says that it was obvious that even as a little boy, John was very conscious of just how precious our planet is, along with all the life it contains. He also said that John's entire extended family is smiling down on him right now and that they are very proud of his life path. Okay, so let's move forward. There's a lot to John Pierre. So when trying to come up with a logical way to discuss his accomplishments, I decided to go with the onion analogy. John's like an onion, a very sweet Vidalia onion, of course, but still an onion. There's the surface layers on top that most of us see, but then there's all these layers underneath that lead to his core. So starting with that very top layer that most of us see, um, especially here at the Summerfest, John's a fitness expert and a personal trainer, and he's been on a long mission to combat sedentary living. He's not about taking someone into the gym for an hour and then saying goodbye until the next session. Rather, he teaches people how to integrate motion into their day all day long and he makes it fun. He teaches all different kinds of classes like boot camp here at Summerfest and he works one-on-one -on -one with clients including Fortune 500 CEOs and celebrities such as Emily Deschanel and Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers and Pamela Anderson and Maggie Q from Mission Impossible and Live Free or Die Hard, and Steve Wilkos and Joaquin Phoenix and Portia de Rossi and Ellen DeGeneres, who identifies John as her fitness guru, plasters his videos all over her website and has hosted him on her show. And John's also a nutritionist. And his fitness clients get coached on how to transition to a plant-based diet for improvement in athletic performance, disease prevention, weight loss and healthy weight maintenance, and ultimately for deeper reasons pertaining to our roles and purpose as humans, as you'll soon hear. And those famous clients, they begin to so completely integrate their plant-based diet into their identity that they ultimately speak out about how beneficial eating like this is for them. And in doing so, they take John's plant-based message directly into the mainstream for all to see. This particular photo is the before and after of one of John's former clients, the beautiful Maureen Orico, who happens to be here at the Summerfest. Maureen, I hope I pronounced your last name right. John thoroughly coached her in exercise and nutrition, and as she embraced a plant-based diet, her husband and her two girls also jumped on board. And because her girls are now so passionate about their vegan identity on so many levels, their friends from school are now following in their footsteps. That is such a beautiful photograph. John's also done several collaborative DVDs on nutrition and exercise, and two are shown here with Dr. Carrie Saunders and Chef AJ. Yep. <laughs> we love Dr. Saunders and Chef AJ, too. This is John's newly released book, Pillars of Health. It's a simple, straightforward, smart, engaging, and motivational way to understand and apply his principles of vibrant health. As he discussed at the plenary, John's premise is that when we build a strong foundation of four particular pillars, we construct a happy life overflowing with well-being. These four pillars are nutrition, the mind, and motion, and compassion. Pillars of Health is the pinnacle of decades of John's work, all compiled into one neat volume. I just read it about a month ago. John, I actually already had the book, but I couldn't tell you that. I need you to sign it. <laughs> I read the book about a month ago, and I absolutely love his section on compassion, which leads to John's inner layers when it comes to that onion analogy. So let's go a little bit deeper. First of all, it's hard to convey to you the work that John has accomplished in the field of women's empowerment. He has spent the past 30 years volunteering in women's shelters and literally and figuratively holding the hands of women who have endured unspeakable abuse, leading them to new lives mentally, physically, and emotionally. He teaches, 
he guides, he coaches, he supports. Using his fitness and nutrition knowledge and his compassionate heart and soul, he makes people whole again. And for some people, he makes them whole for the very first time in their lives. To say that he goes the extra mile isn't enough. This is a man who cares for these people as if they're his own family. One story about John pertains to a client of his with no money to pay for his coaching services, no money to pay for fresh organic produce. But she felt such gratitude toward John for helping her that she asked if she could do him a favor. So he gave her some money and he asked her to do some shopping for him since he was really busy. But after buying the groceries, when she attempted to get the food to John, all of a sudden he was just too busy to pick it up, he was going out of town, something's going on. So he said, please, just do me a favor and keep it before it goes bad. You'll be doing me a favor by keeping it. I've heard story after story after story like this. This isn't just what John does, it's who John is. He gives to people in need on so many levels, yet he spares them their dignity the whole time. People do not feel like a charity case. And here's something else. John mentioned this the other night, but he didn't give himself enough credit for it. Surprise, surprise. John is a pioneer in the field of boosting cognitive performance in seniors. He was one of the very first professionals to ever speak about the relationship between diet and balance. And this goes back 30 years. Folks, this is about seriously extending the quality of life for people who others typically forget about. His work includes brain building exercises and motion and nutrients and aromatherapy and not surprisingly, a plant-based diet. Another story that I love about John has to do with when he first started leading groups in nursing homes. He would come early to set up just to get all his stuff together and he noticed that a lot of the residents would come in really early, probably out of boredom or out of excitement to see a new face. So he started to come in even earlier than he needed to, realizing that these people craved meaningful human interaction. So he would come really early and he would provide it time after time after time eventually coming to the conclusion that this meaningful interaction was at least as important as any advice that he was going to give during the actual presentation. John helps people help themselves, but here's the thing. We know his clients are diverse. The bouncer from the Jerry Springer show, the movie star, abused women who are actually contemplating suicide, seniors in desperate need for cognitive and physical and emotional health, all the overweight people who have collectively lost thousands of pounds under his guidance. Lots of diversity there. But there's something that all of these people ultimately end up having in common. They start to see the world differently. They experience a widening of their circle of compassion. Suddenly, they don't want to step on an ant. They begin to consider the health of the planet with every bite they take. They start to confront issues from their past that may be weighing them down in a more figurative sense. They become conscious of the impact of their diet on their bodies, on their minds, on their hearts, on their souls, on the animals' hearts and souls, and on the health of the planet. Best-selling author Rory Friedman says about John, your passion and drive are as pure as your essence. Your life's mission is to be of service, and you carry it out with wisdom, generosity, and grace that are unparalleled. And Maggie Q, one of those Hollywood clients that has relied on his personal training for her absolutely incredible physique, says, the power of John Pierre doesn't even lie in his extensive knowledge or in his ability to transform. It may shockingly be the least of his talents. The heart of this man is what centers his purpose. If the love of one being could move a mountain for others, this is the person who will do it. Every single person that I interviewed for this present presentation said the same thing. John Pierre is a model of grace like no one they've ever met in their life. He peruses the natural foods trade show with a serious professional eye but gives all the free vegan food samples that he got to the homeless people right outside the convention center. He takes his shoes off to give to the man on the street with no shoes. Somehow, making the shoeless man feel like he's actually doing John a favor by accepting them. And here's the really big thing, just by being himself, by being a model of compassion, he inspires those around him to do the same. 
For all John does for people, he also works for animals, the voiceless in our society. His lifelong goal just got a step closer to fruition as he received his 5013C for Living with Harmony, an animal sanctuary where abused and neglected farmed and lab animals will be given a place to heal and to live a peaceful existence. And this sanctuary will also be a haven for women and girls recovering from sex trafficking. Once he completes his fundraising phase, Living with Harmony will be a place for all to give and to receive love and compassion. A place where people can teach and learn about the benefits of a plant-based diet and vegan lifestyle. A place where people of all walks of life can experience the power of compassion and what it means to care for each other, human and non-human. John, you may be a celebrity trainer, but based on the way you live your life, I'm pretty sure that you would just call that your day job. Your calling is reaching out to the downtrodden, to the forgotten, the voiceless, the neglected members of society. You give them hope, and you show them how to live again in a way that's more fulfilling than they ever knew possible. Your number one priority is making others feel good about their minds and their hearts and their bodies, and you inspire us all to reach out on behalf of others. John, my wish for you on this night and on all your nights forward is that every single one of us here in this room, as well as every single person on this planet, will adopt your ultimate call to action, think good thoughts and do good deeds. Okay, John, you can actually stay seated. We have one more thing for you. Yep, you can stay. Paula Kutri is one of John's former clients, and she's here with us tonight to talk for just a couple of minutes about her personal experience with John. I hope you can see where you are, John. I see you. Make sure you can see. Paula's coming up. Okay, Paula? Yeah. Paula Kutri. Good evening, everyone. My name is Paula Kutri, like she said, and I'm honored to have been asked to speak about the incredible, amazing impact John Pierre has had on my life. Sorry, I'm a little emotional. Um, my life, my family's life, my community, and the entire world. The conference organizers asked me if I could speak for five minutes but I would need five conferences to express what Jean-Pierre has done for others. He's devoted his entire life to the betterment of people, animals, and the environment. But before I talk about our journey, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I've been sick for as long as I could remember. I, um, I had a bad allergy to cheese, and they couldn't figure out what it was, and I kept getting sicker and malnutritioned. At 16, I was diagnosed with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. I also had um, diabetes, and I suffered a stroke in uh, 2001. That's when I met Jean-Pierre. My stroke was in... March, and uh, a friend of mine told me John Pierre was going to be a speaker at Wild Oats in Evanston, so I figured I'd go see him. And I never could focus or understand things, and John Pierre it just clicked in my head. He just, some miracle happened, and he saved my life. I was crippled. When I met Jean-Pierre, I was in a wheelchair. And I remember him looking at me. And after he was done with his lecture, I asked him if he could please help me shop. And he looked at me and he said, of course. So we shopped. After two shopping carts, I was 
I was on my um, walker because I didn't want to use the wheelchair. Everything he was saying and talking, and he, uh, he, I understood that all animals and animal byproducts cause inflammation. And because I was in so much pain, not only from the stroke, from the rheumatoid arthritis. And when I was diagnosed, they only gave you aspirin, and I had really bad stomach issues. I'm sorry. <laughs> so anyway, um, the, f the first time uh, that I called Jean-Pierre, I was so excited because I made my own oatmeal. And he didn't think, he didn't understand what I was saying. So he says, that's good, Paula. That's part of the program. But I said, no, John. I stood up by myself, and I made my own oatmeal. And my husband had to bathe me, uh, feed me, not feed me, but cook for me. I could eat by myself. And when I was talking to John, he just was so excited that it made me more excited. Whatever Mary Beth said, I witnessed it all with my eyes. The compassion that I've seen this man have, not towards me, but towards everybody. And anybody that knows him here knows exactly what I'm talking about. And I just want to thank you, John, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Paula Kutri. Um, John, why don't you come up? John, the Board of Trustees of the North American Vegetarian Society is proud to include you in the Vegetarian Hall of Fame. And we are deeply humbled that you have taken the time every year for the past 20 years to attend and contribute to this conference. The world is a better place because of you, and we thank you and we honor you. Well, I usually have a lot to say, and now I don't, but thank you very much. Thank you so much for everyone for being here, and thanks for acknowledging the work I've done. But I really couldn't have done any of the work that I've done without the pioneers who came before me here who were honored and who have been my heroes and motivators and inspiration. And I think activism is, is something that I've always done. I've always believed that living on Earth, we have to pay rent, and activism is the rent to try to do good, to take care of the animals and the planet. And activism isn't always easy. Actually, it's kind of hard, I think, um, because it, it takes a commitment, and you have to go out of your comfort level, and you know you have to do hard work. And when people have asked me who are my heroes, they've always been activists, the people who have numb fingers from leaf litting in the cold for all the years in front of a fur store, the people who are always out boycotting and picketing and writing letters. So. It's not always easy, but I always think to myself, as hard as the activism is, it must be harder for an animal that's in a cage being experimented on. It must be harder for the earth that's getting pounded and pounded day in and day out by pollution and abuse. So those are some of the things that keep me inspired is the people and of course the animals and, and the earth. So I really feel I'm just a spoke on, on a wheel. I'm just one of the persons doing good in the world. And I think we're all activists to some extent. So I think that's the secret is for all of us to maybe keep extending ourselves a little bit more and do a little bit more every day. It's not easy, but again, just think of the animals. Think about what they go through, the animals that are being experimented on. I remember when I was a child, I could never sleep after I would watch the videos. And I always thought about the animals in cages. And I think about the earth and the abuse that the earth took. So that's what inspired me. So I thank you so much for um, giving me this, this great honor, and I hope to continue to, to do good in the world, but I ask that each and every one of you just try to extend yourself a little bit more every day to protect the earth and the animals, because they definitely need it. So thank you very much.